So the winners of our Guess the Wheat Yield and Guess the Hay Yield contest are, drum roll please. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I wish you could put that clip from Christmas Vacation in there. But the first place winner was Boyd Anderson. He got the closest on the wheat and, well, he got the closest on both of them. And he guessed 85 bushel to the acre of wheat and 35 bushel to the acre, uh, I mean 35 bale to the acre of hay. So he's our first place winner. And our second place winner is Marcus McKnight who guessed 88 bushels to the acre. Boyd Anderson, email me. Marcus McKnight, email me, and we will, I'll get in touch with you, and we will send you something special in the mail for participating. Now with that, let's get the video started. So what's up, guys? It's Thursday, June the 15th. Sam Clouds, we've been getting a little moisture. Not as much as we'd like to get, but we've been getting some. Got a tent Sunday and a tent yesterday, Wednesday. So, uh, cutting weight's gonna be iffy today on the moisture. Hopefully, uh, I don't want to wish rain away, but hopefully that sun's gonna come out and dry the straw out or it'll go on and rain. Robert's down in the field planting beans. He just got started. He's on a 90 acre block with a 15 foot drill. I'm actually say if it gets it planted today. But uh, he's got some uh, four or five cropland beans on there. It's a wind pack, meaning it's a blend of two beans. And uh, one's more of a race horse bean and more one's more of a workhorse bean. So the idea behind the wind packs are you kind of got your bases covered whether you have a good year or a bad year and we kind of do the same thing with our wheat the wheat that we plant is actually a blend of two cropland wheats and that has worked really good for us I get on in the old service truck and the seed tender gonna run over circle s uh majority of our beans this year have been stein and i buy them over at circle s uh, that's who i get all my starter fertilizer from we're going to run over there and pick our stein soybeans up, get them loaded on the trailer, and take them over to Robert, and we'll walk up here, and uh, we'll either spray some bean ground or cut some wheat today. We'll, we'll just have to see what happens. Soybean acres for 2023. I just sat down here in the office doing some rough figuring. I'm fixing to load the seed tender. We stuck with what we knew this year. We only have one bean, one new bean in the pack, that's this cropland 4.5, 65 acres. Stein 5.0, uh, done well for us last year, 120, 120 acres. And Stein 4.6, as you can tell, we went very heavy on it. We we really like this bean. It is a uh, it is a tough son of a gun. Last year I tried lots of new varieties, and I wish I hadn't. And I wish I just stuck with this old 4.6 of new. I wish. Last year in the drought, I wish every acre I planted had been this 4-6 stein because it was, it was a show out. Last year separated the man, men from the boys on soybean varieties. I'm waiting on the deer to dry off. I'm doing some housekeeping items. TJ brought us uh, two more bags of these 4-6s. They're not treated, but we're going to put our seed plus graphite on them. We planted some uh, naked seed last year and was not was not happy with it. Uh, we treated every bean this year and got a lot better emergence. So I thought we was going to save that, them dollars on that uh, seed treatment, but I think, that's, I think a good quality seed treatment is money well spent. From what I've seen, gonna put these on the back. Uh, beans we're finishing up here. You know we're not gonna treat these beans, but we got, we're gonna put our C plus graphite on them. This last bag, you know we might have a little left over, but we might have to use it for some replant. We got 10, 12 acres gonna be iffy about coming up, and if we don't get a rain. I don't know about these wheat beans. You know I hope we ain't got to plant them over. We're uh, Good chance of rain this weekend. 
We're taking a leap of faith and putting them in the ground. As Matt Griggs said in one of his cotton planting videos, it's danged if you do and danged if you don't. function without a forklift anymore. I honestly don't. What it, it, what it will do though is make a lazy man out of you, but I uh, thought I'd show you a little bit about the, how these bulk bags work. You pull this string, kind of a safety backup string. Maybe y'all can sit there. They got a little uh, Little Velcro deal here that holds the bottom together. And it is good, it is good material. And when you get that done, you kind of got to tighten it. Right there in that bag is 40 units. A unit of seed is 140,000. That's kind of the standard. And that's about why most everybody plants around here is about 140,000. Bands, we use the drill. We run a little higher populations. We plant 160. And this double crop wheat straw in the bad conditions we've been having, we are planting 175,000. And I know you're gonna say, ain't that expensive? Well, what's more expensive? Going on and putting some extra seed out there 
and getting a better stand and not losing any yield and risking not uh, having to replant or uh, or the likelihood of having to replant because you didn't get enough stand out there and uh, reduced yield to due to reduced stand. We had a reduced stand last year in our wheat beans because some of them just come up and died. 72 days without rain will do that to you. I've got a saying. Well, actually, I got two sayings. When in doubt, replant. And half the stand, half the yield. That's, uh, that's two of Dylan's sayings. Let's pick this box up and get this 5.6 million seed onto the uh, trailer. talk about some wheat that has been the surprise of the century for me is this wheat right here this is the no-till wheat behind double crop wheat and double crop beans last year and it is cutting the 85 bushel to the acre if there ever was a surprise in my life, it is, it is this one. This, this has taught me one thing. Don't never give up on wheat. Say it all the way through the end. Because I legitimately believe that this wheat might have went 90 if we had uh, gave it the full treatment. But I, it, it, Just everything I know went out the window on this one. It, I mean, I didn't... You know, I drilled it. I, when I drilled it, I drilled it with the hopes of seven, you know, 70 to 75, you know. I never dreamed that we'd be cutting 85. I, you know, that's getting up there with the, that's getting up there with the numbers that we, uh, that this farm produced last year. And we, last year was, the uh, best weed crop we had ever had. But I believe this wheat crop is going to top it. And it just don't, I don't know if it's cause we got that palisade on it, but it don't look thick at all. Well now you got this right here that's thick. Nothing, it's nothing like last year. That wheat last year, when when I cut that wheat was just a, was just a dig up mat or straw on top of the ground, so. We got good test weight, 60 plus test weights. For some of these wetter areas, it's the best weight they've ever made. And I mean, I think a lot of that has to do with the dry April though. We had a dry April, that wheat was able to tiller out, was able to set a good head on it. And I know May turned off wet, but May was wet and cool. And, uh, you know, you kind of set yourself up for head scab with the way it may, but I mean, them good fungicides that we're using, uh, them good fungicides we're using really pay off. That, mer that Mervis Ace is a, is a sure enough good fungicide. And that Presaro Pro, we took a, took a look at it this year, and it's a, it's a good uh, fungicide. Uh, in the future, in the future, I imagine we'll just use whichever one's cheaper. I might, because they're pretty much, from what I've seen, interchangeable. About the best we've cut is, uh, the worst we've cut is 82. 
and the best we've cut is 93. Uh, we hadn't quite seen as high numbers as we did in 2022, but it's a lot more consistent from one end to the other. It's pretty well the same from one end of the field to the other. But these are some long old rows right here, guys. Every, every round is 2.2 acres. And uh, we're cutting about two, we're cutting about, right now in this better weight, uh, well, it's all been good once we got the end rows cut off, but right here in this better weight, uh, we've been cutting about 200 bushel off 2.2 acres. So, uh, it's uh, just me by myself, uh, Robert's planting beans. You know, I got a dump every round, but you're cutting 2.2 acres every round. He's actually, he actually come up here to haul a truck off for me because I thought that, uh, you know, I, I'm trying to get enough empty trucks and the grain cart and the combine empty so that I can finish this field tonight, but, uh, I almost got another truck load up there right now. Leave it. What I got will probably fill that blue truck. that truck will climb that hill you can go on and bring it down here in the flat and I'll come pick you up and take you to the blue truck Take it on down there to where it flattens out. You can see where I kind of shaved the ground down there. stupid GoPro ain't working so we'll just use the old iPhone but this is the old field that uh, was way behind weight that I was bragging about earlier in the day that's doing so good my yes I know my windows are super dusty this weight's gotten super dusty but average fell down from about 85 to 82 but that's pretty dang good does it uh, if you look right there, you know I often talk about how it's hard for us to have 100 bushel averages on our farm. Well this right here is why. When you fall, and I'll show you something right here. But right here I'm kind of, I'm practicing for bean cutting in this thin weight. I want to see how that old header shapes the grain. We're crossing the ditch here. You can see it flex. I mean, it's just like having, it's just like having Contour Master, man. She's shaving on her. She's shaving over here. I think we're gonna cut beans. I think we're gonna be able to cut beans just fine. I don't see no reason why we can't. Right here, we'll see if we can't let her work over this. But shaving over here, shaving over there, 
Gotta work around a pipe there. Better pick up over this ditch. That is one thing I like about this header though. If you're crossing the ditch and you know, cutting this weight and the header bumps, it ain't the end of the world. We're coming back up into the good weight. Our average should start climbing back up. We got the burst of the weight cut. But very, very happy with the honey bee. Very, very pleased. We've had a pretty good day for me cutting by myself. Robert was having a big day. Kind of had some unforeseen circumstances we're not the happiest about, but. Uh, Robert did haul two trucks off for me where we could, where I could try to get this done today. I'm hoping I can get this done and put this weight on the truck. And then the last farm we lack, all this has been uh, the Sam's farm, which is my granddaddy's farm. 180 had 180 acres. There's 180 acres in that, and it was all in weight this year. And that's a cash rent farm. And my last farm is a share rent farm, so uh, I'm hoping I can get this combine moved down there, cut out a hole, uh, go get the grain buggy, put this weight on that buggy, or grain cart. Some people say they've never heard it called a grain buggy. I don't know where I come up with that term. It's, it's a pretty common term down here in the south. I've heard more than I'm going to have heard more than one person call it a grain bug. Some, sometimes crossing this stuff, this header makes some strange noises. I'm still, I'm still learning all the noises that, uh, that, the, that a draper makes. But, uh, yeah, very happy with this weight. Um, let me show you this. That's, uh, but that's where you fall below that terrace, and that red is what really kills, what really kills the average. Oh, 
you back in the grain elevator. I was so proud of Tyson for running two pits this, uh, this uh, spring on wheat harvest. Bit. We get here to the final, final two days and they go back to running one pit when everybody gets fired up. Bless them. I tell you guys, having that old Sterling back and running right has been a real blessing to us this spring. It's uh, took the load off old blue and uh, made life a lot easier for us.